Welcome everyone to my art class. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to be learning about watercolors this week. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the way that we treat watercolors. Um, one thing that you're doing is that when you have your watercolor brushes, you want to make sure that you clean them out really well. Even though watercolors are uh, liquid and they wash out really easy, you want to wash the brushes really good and then you want to put them in uh, the point down with the bristles up because what happens is if you put them bristle down it bends the brushes and it ruins the brushes um, so that's one of the things you want to take care of um, I've set out lots of different um, sizes and types of brushes for you guys and um, they're all blue handled um, they're a medium brush they're not a great brush but they are pretty nice watercolor brushes so you'll be using those ones um, what I have today is a really large piece of paper. Um, what you're going to do first is when you get your paper, you're going to fold it on this crease right here. And you'll see, that's where I ripped it out of the book, like that. Give it a nice hard pull and then you're going to flip it over and do it again. And you're going to pull it like this and then gently pull it off. You want to make sure that you do that gently because you, and fold it over back and forth at least one time each direction because you want to make sure that it comes off easily and you don't tear your paper. There is only one paper per person so we want to make sure that we're taking care of our, of our supplies. Alright, once you have your paper ready the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a crayon and I've got little small pieces of nubs this is a new crayon black crayon but you're going to take your crayon the little tiny nubs and it's fine if they're really short um, it's just to draw some lines and what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line that is one fluid motion with lots of loops and all over your page and you're, then you're going to go to the end of the page and you're going to stop. So I'm going to demonstrate. You start at one side and then you're going to draw some loops. You want to draw all over, crossing. You're going to draw, you might want to keep it all curved and smooth. You might want to do a jag or a little turn. You can go to the edge and then start again, however you want it to look. You do want to stop at one point. You don't want to do too much. And you can look at your my page. I've got lots of different little sections. And so then I'm done with my crayon. You take your black crayon and you can set it aside. The next thing you do need to do is very important and you're going to take a permanent marker and you're going to sign your artwork because you need to sign that before. Don't forget this step because it's really important. When you work on a piece of art and you make it your own, you need to make sure that you are taking care of it. Um, sorry, I want this to be a section. Um, you can go back through and you can add a couple of uh, pieces also. So then sign your name on your art. And always choose, sign your name on the bottom corner, and it can be anywhere on the corner. Okay? Just choose a bottom corner. Write your name small, however you like. You can write it in cursive, you can write it in block letters. Um, uh, Henry Matisse used to write, sign his with HM, uh, so you can choose that. However you want to do it, just as long as we know. Then you're going to get your watercolors, and I've selected for you guys a bigger watercolor palette than this, so that you have lots of different types of colors. Um, I even set out some shimmery, shiny ones, um, but I'm going to demonstrate with just this small palette today. Okay, so once you have your palette and your paintbrush, you need to get yourself a cup of water, and you need to fill it up. Don't fill it up too full. I would fill it up to about a third or halfway full. You can change your water as often as you like. 
it doesn't matter. It's fine getting up multiple times and changing a water once it gets a little dirty because it will change the color of your watercolors. To do watercolors, you're gonna dip your, your paintbrush into the water then you're gonna get it really wet and you take that hole, you don't want to get the, the drops off, you want to keep them on your brush and you're gonna pick a color. You put it in the watercolor that you want and then you can go pick up some more some more color or some more water and then you just swirl it around until the paint you want to look like this until the paint starts to turn the water a little bit opaque so you can see it getting thicker so you just swirl that around a little bit then you can take that and you're gonna paint one of the sections of your painting now you can see that this is very dark and it is a very bold color now if I want to do the same color but I want it to be lighter I'm gonna add more water and I can do that two ways I can put more water in the palette or I can just add more water to my brush and make another so that's one then I'm gonna pick um, if I want to keep using that color, I can do anywhere on my, on my paper, but I'm not going to do anything that's touching this. So I cannot do blue that color. So I can do blue somewhere else. So I'm going to add a little extra water this time. And I'm not going to pick up as much paint. And I'm going to do right here, blue. And I'm going to show you. I put down a little bit of paint, and then I'm going to get some water, and I'm just going to put just water on top of it. And as you can see, I can pull the paint around and it will be lighter and more watery. So this is a technique that we use called wet on dry. And the reason why we use crayon because crayon is a wax and it's resistant to water. So you could, if I paint it over on accident, Say I paint over here over it you'll still see my lines um, so that's when you do want to try to try to not pull out on them you can go over them again if you don't like if you think want them to be darker you can go over and make them darker like this um, if you'd like I'm just trying to save a little time so um, so now I want to pick up a new color so I'm gonna rinse off my brush as best I can now if I were to take this blue water and put it into the yellow, I'm gonna get green. I'm gonna get a very light green, but it's gonna be a yellowish green. So I don't wanna do that. If I wanna make sure that I keep my yellow clean, um, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go to the sink, I'm gonna dump this out and get new water. But just to show you guys today, I'm just gonna pick a color that it's not gonna really matter. I'm gonna pick purple. So I'm gonna grab some purple and I'm gonna paint purple. Now, I can paint close to these. If I paint close to this color with the blue, I just wanna make sure that I don't go onto the line. If I were to touch the blue, the wet blue with a different color, it's gonna bleed into it. So I'm gonna choose a different area. This might take you a while to do this painting, and it is fine. If you wanted to work on it a little bit and paint it and then come back to it later, that would be great. So I'm just gonna pick some areas and I'm gonna pick purple. I'm gonna do some purple there. And I'm gonna, you know what I've decided? I, I just made a decision that I'm gonna paint all of the insides of the loops purple right now. So I'm gonna do that. So I would just go through and I would paint all of these. Another tip that I can give you is to have a paper towel ready for yourself because you can use that to make sure that your brush is clean in between. It also helps you to use a dry brush. So you might want to put some paint, uh, some water 
in the paint palette, get it all mixed up. and then clean your brush off and then dry it and use a dry brush. So this is a dry brush technique. Um, and then you can take, and then you can use it on there. And for lighter colors, or if you want like a really sharp line, that's a really good way to, technique to use. make sure that no color is touching itself so you can't have blue next to blue and the same thing with white you can't have white next to white I think the white leaving some white gives it some contrast but you can go ahead and color and paint the whole thing you might want to choose a palette of maybe of three colors maybe you want to use every color that's in the palette you can choose some very famous artists choose they have white red blue and yellow, or maybe they choose uh, all of the rainbow colors, or maybe they choose all of the reds or the yellows or the oranges. Um, maybe they want to do just blues and yellows and green. It's up to you. It's your art. You get to decide how you want it to look. Thanks for coming and watching me paint, and I hope that you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you next time.